Hey everyone, this is a very quick impromptu video for Janet because she left a comment in the comment section after I posted a video that went live this morning around, I think it was like 5.30. Um, and I'm going to try to show her to do what I was telling her she could give a try to. All right, so she her, can, her question was, how do you make stuff overlap? So I'm going to do the best I can. All right, if you're a beginner and you don't understand stuff, the best thing to do is to give it a shot with a pencil because why is it not focusing? Come on, there you go. Because it's easy to erase. Speaking of erasing, let me just get myself an eraser because I always have to have an eraser handy which I don't seem to have right now. Um, okay, so there's this big, fat, ugly one. Not my favorite eraser. Okay, so she was asking about how to make things overlap. This is how I do it. And she mentioned leaves. Can you see this? Crud, no. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to myself the whole time I do anything. <laughs> well, basically I am because you're not here with me. All right, so she was mentioning the leaves. I'm not going to draw anything in there yet. So this is how you make things overlap. If you're a beginner and you're unsure about overlapping, do it like this. To give yourself practice, do it like this. Now the leaf. My goodness, it's busy day today. Now, this was leaf number one, and this is leaf number two. But now it looks like this is leaf number two, and this is leaf number one, because now this is on the top, simply because you erased these two lines that were there. Okay, after you do that a few times, you are able to visualize without drawing the other set of lines. Because when you look at it, there's your leaf, and you want the other leaf to intersect, and you want one on top, you just go like this. And in my head, and sometimes I catch myself doing this, I'll go like this. You know? How's that? And, and sometimes your indentation looks like it's a little out of sync. It's all right. Don't worry about it. How's that? And then after that, you just build on it. All right, so we have this leaf. Let's put this in the center. This one. Let me back you out a little bit so you can see it better. All right, so you want to put petals in between. Start with what you've already got, which are these lines right here. And then you can make them smaller, you can make them larger. Always start with what you've got. All right, you want your flower to be even larger? Do it like this. Now see, what you've got are these lines here. So, you can make it smaller. You have these lines here. Here. Very simple to do. I'm only building on what I have already done. I don't need to do the whole petal because truly you don't need it on there because this is the top petal. What you're doing in between are petals. You have this petal, then you have the one that lies underneath it, and then you've got another one that goes this way. Okay. Let's see. Let's keep going. Now the tricky thing is...
is to introduce a new flower to the pattern that's not a part of the original one you drew. So you can do this where you draw another flower. So this one is on top of this one because you can't see the tip because this is blocking it. Again, you can't see all of it because this one is blocking what will be this one. And you can't see the tip because it's underneath this petal here. You want another petal in between them because that looks too far apart. All you do is take this and go like this because this petal is on top of this one. So let me show you this. Is empty space. All right, so you're going to do this one. And honestly, your petals don't have to be perfect. I think the imperfection, like Lisa Congdon would say in her videos that I watched, imperfection gives something character, gives it interest, gives it dimension. All right, so now you have your center. This is your center. Here's your center. So now you want to build on this flower to where it kind of intersects with the one next to it. So you just use, like, like I said, just use what you've got. This right here and this right here are your base. Go up, down, and around. So this is overlapping here. And this is touching that one. So you have these that I already did around in the other one. Because you're assuming that the petals are attached underneath here. All right. Again, you want to make another flower overlap. Don't draw the whole flower. Here's the center. Okay. And you know that I drew the others. Here's the part that I would draw. So this will go here. You can't see it because this and the rest of the flower is blocking it. Then you go up this way and circle. You can make it go this way and down. So only a portion is showing. And then fill this in with just a few lines to make it look like there's a petal underneath. So you have this petal on top of this one, this one's on top of this one, and this one's on top of this one. Okay, let's see, so let's do this one. We do this one. You don't want to draw over anything you've already drawn. Right? Sorry, these are kind of sloppy, but I just want to draw them large enough and in pencil so that you can see what I'm talking about. And this right here is an open space, but there should be a petal there. But you can't see it because all these other things are on top of it. And that's how you kind of pile one on top of the other. All right, so leaves are the same thing. Draw the leaf. And that's a small leaf, so you would assume that the rest of the leaf is hiding underneath that one. So you don't see any of this. So it's like as if you had erased it. And there you go. And then when you fill it in, There you go. Pretty simple, right? It's it's an optical illusion or it's your brain knows that the other part is somewhere in the recesses of your mind. You know that the rest of this leaf is hiding underneath here. 
Okay, so let's do another leaf. And you're assuming that the rest of this leaf is right there on the bottom underneath. So this is all covered up by the other two leaves. You can't see it because this is on top of it and this is on top of it. So you do this and you pretend like you're drawing the lines from underneath the part you can't see. Simple, huh? So you don't see this part right here because these other two leaves are on top of it. I think, let me back you out. I think that kind of shows you how I did the other ones. Um, there is another thing that you can do, and this has to do with swirls. Oh, well, circles, circles are the same way. Let's do circles first, circle. Another circle, but if you were to keep going, it would be like this. And some things, you can do that where you do the inside of the circle different with the lines to show the intersection of the two. Some people use color. You can do lines or different patterns to show the, uh, sorry, in, that you can show the intersection of the two. You want to put another um, circle on top of that. Almost whole circle. And you have to remember to indent your part here. I have a hard time remembering that. Or if you only want a portion of the circle, just do a portion of the circle. Very easy to do. Once your eye and your hand connect and go, oh yeah, we're not doing the whole circle. Boom, 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 boom. That's not very round. Once you do that, your eye and your hand will work together to make the deception. <laughs> So then you have this, that's that one. Then you have this one here. Then you've got this one here. That's all there is to it. Not a big deal. All right, there is one more, like I said, the swirls. Swirls are a little more tricky and they turn out so different every time. This basically is the same, whoops. This basically is the same concept every single time. This is not. All right, so you have a swirl and you go back around the same way that you came, but you want it to be more built up here. What you do is you still run along the same lines and then you skip a little here and then make it meet back there. So it gives it a different depth percep perception. All right, so I'm gonna take it and run it up here and around and down. So now it has a little more depth to it. No shading or anything. But if you shade, if you did shading, you might want to go around here, around the inside. Let's see if I have a nub. A paper stubby. Ugh. Oh, come on. Every time I get closer to it, it scoots further back away from me. Well, son of a gun. Okay, so I'm gonna revert to my cotton stuff like I did last time. Just kinda smooth out the pencil look. Whoops, out of frame. There we go, just kinda smooth it out a little bit. You can rub it in other places too to give it depth. Now the camera's gonna go wonky. Okay, I must've moved too fast, sorry. Let me move slowly for the camera. <laughs> Silly thing. You could do on the outside around this way. And I'm doing this on a piece of cardboard, so if you look really closely, you can see the ridges. Sorry, I did this, like I said, kind of impromptu. And then smooth this out up brown and behind the rest of it. How's that? Um, if you think it's too covered up here, just take an eraser, you know, and just erase inside the lines a little bit. Or people use masks. I don't use masks. Like, you know, I can't think of the name brand of the mask now, but and sometimes I'll use rubber cement, but not for this kind of stuff. There you go. All right, so swirls again. Do a swirl this way. And 
and your lines can touch or not, whatever your preference is. Just keep going, but this one I'm going to make it go around and I'm not going to, I'm just going to keep going and build on top to where it looks like a wave. Oh look, it hit the leaf, can't finish the wave. Oh look, it hit a leaf, can't finish the wave. There you go. Dueling is, is very simple. The part that for me is complicated is trying to figure out what the light source is and where you should do the shading. But honestly, you know, I'm basically a beginner with the shading thing and I guess it doesn't really matter at this point in time for me. I don't know. I'm not as concerned about that as I am as making the rest of this look nice. Assuming this will look okay, and I'm going with that story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I wish I had my paper stub. I think it's in the living room. There you go. Um, let's see what else. I'm trying to think the other things that I drew in the, the video I posted this morning. Let's see. Do I have any of the prints? No, I don't have any of the prints. Anyway, so... It is relatively easy to stack one thing on top of the other. It's not hard. You just have to imagine in your head when you stack things, how they would look, where they would begin and where they would end. And you don't always have to stack other things on top of something. There's nothing stacked on this one. It's laying side by side with this one right here. But they both are laying on top of this. So this is a top. This is a top. This is a bottom. 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 But you could make this one a top by putting another one here. And this one will be a bottom to this one. And this one is a bottom to that one. Then when you do your lines or any kind of doodling, you need to remember that if you change the direction or do anything, you have to stay within the confines of where you're working. Like you can't just keep going the lines across there because what's the point? So you need to remember, there are no cross lines there. There are no cross lines there because this is laying on top of this and you can't see those lines underneath. And in order to make sure that that doesn't happen, there you go, there's two pieces of paper, one sitting on top of the other. And then both of these are laying on another surface. Now you will have to try to figure out shading for yourself. I don't know anything about shading. <laughs> All right, there you go. So this is the bottom. This one is the top. Okay, Janet, I hope... Oops, sorry, wrong way. I hope this kind of explains to you about the doodling not really sure that this is what you need. Let me know if this does it for you. All right, bye.